So let's talk about observability, how we understand our systems in production through logging metrics and tracing. Uh, I chose this topic because I think while we hear a lot about them, they're easy to confuse. So one nice thing we have is besides time, there is some unifying theory between these things, which is that everything's based on events. Um, it's pretty straightforward in logging. For example, uh, you know, logs ev emit events. That's their primary unit. If you think about other things, they're derived from it, like metrics. Um, so you might have an event that's a request passing through the system. And through a measurement of that request, like its duration, uh, you can actually create new events, like uh, RPS. Um, and there, and there's, so there's interesting relationships there, but it is uh, another example of something uh, related to events. Tracing, uh, probably the more mystical of the three, is also event-based, but um, the key difference here is there's causal ordering. So you'd be able to tell the impact of one request, like did it spawn five other requests? Uh, did a failure of that one uh, cause an upstream request to fail? So at the end of the day, they're, they're all based on events, but they have different things to add uh, when you're trying to understand your systems. Um, another way we can look at it is uh, focal areas. So um, what are the things that are most interesting about each of these systems? If you look at logging, um, I'll probably say event too many times, but yeah, its focus is the event. They're uh, stateless with regards to each other. Event might be something like a very bad error message that you can't understand. Uh, so you might actually uh, look at that and say, okay, well, here's an error. That's a, that's a request scoped uh, concept. Tracing has a re request scoped um, focus. So for example, maybe that error, we could understand the impact of it. Uh, did it cause another request to fail? Um, we might be able to look at things like aggregates, like um, everything that happens on an IP address. And logging has an ability to uh, often roll up things by IP address. So, th so there's overlaps between the areas too. So you have aggregatable metrics um, with a star there, meaning that not everything that's a metric is aggregatable, like averages don't reason well when you, when you add them together. Um, and then logging through rollups are aggregatable. Uh, there are certain log events that are request scoped, certain ones that are not, like garbage collection or, or audit trails are not necessarily request scoped. So there's, there's lots of ways that these systems relate to each other and there's transitions between them. And, um, but at the end of the day, each of these uh, systems has a focus and, and those can help us in understanding our systems. So to try to um, find another way to uh, relate to these three, let's look at the, the values they create. So if we choose one thing that they all can do, um, and there are many, but let's just choose one, uh, we, could, we could look at response time. So if I have a request going through the system, um, we could actually capture that in any of these three systems. So um, in these sl coming slides are going to be uh, you know, snippets of some things I've copy-pasted from, from various places. Uh, logs are probably what I first looked, looked at when I first started with systems uh, to find response time. You might find that the last field has a duration or maybe you'd have to compare between events and do some math. In this case, uh, we're lucky because duration is calculated for us, someone stuck it in there, and it was 95 milliseconds. If we look into metrics, um, metrics has a you know a focus of, of aggregates, so we can we can use metrics to understand the context of this fact within the system. So if, if this was a 95 millisecond request and it happened around 220, um, then how did that compare with other requests in the system? And so in this this scenario, well, it, it was slow but not critical, it wasn't bad. Most requests were good at the time. Um, if I were to look 10 minutes earlier, maybe it would have been a different system because most uh, a lot of requests were having failures at the time. So metrics can show us their context and that's why we do things like um, put alerts on metrics because they can help us understand trends within our systems. Traces are, are interesting because 
that you've got that causality. So you can tell what happens before something else. You can tell um, in, in many visual ways what the impact of something. So if this was a 95 millisecond request, we could see through a trace it, that perhaps there was an error that delayed the processing of that request. And if that error didn't exist, it would have actually been a, a pretty quick one. So um, that's, that's helpful because in the scope of a single request, we can understand the impact of it and maybe what a remediation would be. So first thoughts here, um, you know, each tool, I think they're all valuable. Uh, logs, for example, are simple, easy to grep, uh, literally, if you wanted to. Manually read if you need to, um, good for monoliths. Uh, certainly, you see everything going on in monolith within its logs. Um, metrics, their specialty here, we've, we found that it helps us understand trends and uh, you know, maybe the, the more system context of, of events that are passing through the system. And uh, traces uh, definitely causality. Uh, that's the thing that it adds above, above all. And um, so you know, we'll, let's start with that. Now, if we're looking at um, how does this data get into the system, well, somebody wrote something, and that's how it ended up in a log file. So uh, let's look at the perspective of actually writing code that does these things. So if um, we look at that log or a similar one, maybe it's like a big string cat that somebody had in a library and um, it was a result of, of uh, someone doing a stopwatch type of activity and then stuffing it in a position in, in, a, um, in a string. Whereas if we're looking at metrics, you'd have something like a, 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 a stat which might be scoped to an endpoint, uh, and I use it for all of, all of such things. And if I was looking at a duration, then this would be adding a value to something that's recording and aggregating um, based on it. In the case of tracing, um, it's a little bit more complex because there's more state. If we want that causality, it has to actually uh, keep context through the system. And so in tracing, we have a jargon called span, which is representing a single operation that's within a uh, potential tree of, of other operations. And so when we write code like this, um, we not only have to uh, pass this context through our process, but if this, this uh, operation resulted in another remote operation, we have to pass it across the network to the next process, usually via HTTP headers and maybe something called trace ID. So, um, so we definitely can, uh, you know, there's libraries to help us with it, but in this case, there's, there's more, more to do. So, I mean, my, my takeaways, which may or may not <laughs> match yours is, uh, logging is, you know, it's an ubiquitous API. You can use global variables. You're passing all the state it needs uh, to, to uh, represent that event. Um, metrics, in my opinion, are the easiest. Um, you've got an API that accepts like a number. You can only stick a number in there. Um, it's hard to do that wrong, although it is very easy to record uh, in unimportant or invalid uh, metrics. Um, traces, I, are, I think, are the hardest to code, uh, particularly because this context has to pass through the system or else you don't get the causality that is the value of tracing. Um, and then after having said that, I mean, should you be writing timing code in the first place? I mean, one of the things is, is that most frameworks already have metrics built into them uh, or interceptors where you could, you could add metrics based on pre-computed things like duration. And an increasing amount of frameworks have tracing built in. Uh, so if, if you don't see this type of code uh, or the outputs of it already, you could, you could ask like via issue or, uh, with the framework you're using. Um, and that might not be a bad idea because uh, timing code has lots of edge cases. Clock skew, sparse data, uh, how to deal with overhead. So um, you may find that uh, working with the frameworks themselves is the best way to get things like uh, duration out of them. So let's say somebody, something did it. You already have this data going into your system. Um, how does it actually get to a point where you can analyze it? And so, so how's it shipped? Um, in the case of logging, um, you know, we're, we're essentially taking these raw events and then parsing them. And they may 
we may be lucky, it may be structured logging, maybe it has, has some things to, uh, that we can take advantage of, but at the end of the day, it's usually getting into a pipeline um, that has some notion of, uh, uh, of what types of data you're going to pull out of it. Um, metrics are interesting because, again, this is deriving information from other information. So um, you have some in inputs that are pre-processed before they actually leave uh, into the metric system. Um, the other thing I'd say is not universally the case, but usually the case that metrics are, are near real time. Um, so increasingly, you will find metric systems that can have uh, the data that you put into it available within seconds. And that's, that's also the case with traces. One of the interesting things about traces, uh, as opposed to logs and metrics, is that uh, traces, because it's a, the unit you actually look at is a tree, um, uh, the system is required to collate that for you. So if I have five different processes, they all don't have the full picture. It's only after the system receives data from all, all five, it can collate into a tree which can show you that causality. So um, there's some work, more work to do on the system side. Um, like my other examples, some of you might find this type of data familiar. If you have uh, data coming into a log file, you may have um, like Logstash or some other system to parse information from it. And because we've been doing log parsing for so long, there's lots of tools uh, to help um, you know, reason with and, and pull things like if it's duration or maybe something you want to roll up maybe by, by IP address. Um, if you look at how aggregates work, particularly things like um, latency, which is which is harder than like request count, which is just simple addition, um, you would have either static or or dynamically defined boundaries, um, which then uh, the the actual library would would uh, classify each duration into. So if I have in this case, this is some code that's simplified version of, of uh, Google's instrumentation library where I have three boundaries, um, you know, representing uh, a few classifications of latency. And my library's job would be to increment uh, a count within those boundaries. And so at the end of the day, um, the data that's going out of metrics library is smaller than the input. Um, and the tracing system, it has the most structure of the three, um, but the downside is that structure is there. So for example, um, you may have some uh, metadata representing the operation, but that uh, data structure may not be compatible with other systems or, or it may itself change over time. So uh, if we look at how this data, once it gets shipped in it, how does it grow? Um, logs grow. Uh, usually people tell me they grow the most. Um, they grow with the rate of traffic. They may also grow uh, with things that are unrelated to traffic, uh, like verbosity levels or uh, garbage collection events, which are loosely related to traffic or audit um, or system lifecycle events. So logs have a lot of reasons to grow. Um, generally, they do grow with traffic. Um, metrics are neat because they're fixed with, with regards to traffic. Because you're sending... Um, you know, derived information, your size of, of metrics data is, is really about, um, you know, how many like endpoints or how, how many unique metrics that you're actually sending across. The value of that, um, it doesn't matter. So for example, if I have a thousand requests per second or 10 requests per second, the number 10 or 1000 is not going to change the size of the data going across the system. Uh, traces, on the other hand, definitely do grow with the, the volume of traffic that's going through your system. And so if we're looking to reduce value for logging, um, one of the easiest ways is don't put irrelevant log entries in, and then they will never come out of your system, or try and find ways of filtering out, uh, whether that's dealing with verbosity levels or otherwise. Um, metrics is interesting um, because one of the ways to reduce the size of your um, metric data is to pay attention to which of the metrics you actually read. It's very easy for frameworks particularly to you know, log a thousand metrics of which only three are ever read. 
Uh, another way is coarser grain. So instead of like request per second, could be request per minute. Um, there's other way, the ways that are available within the aggregates to do that. Um, traces, you can sample them. So for example, I could say one out of 100 requests um, would be sampled, um, but you have to make consistent decisions. And um, one thing not to forget is that you have accidental sampling too. So folks using UDP, uh, there may be something else dropping data on your behalf. Um, you may have other things that are going on that, that intentionally or unintentionally reduce your volume. Um, and then after we get our, our, our data together in these various systems, one of the things that is good about them is that there's, there's usually a way to transition between them. So um, if you have a granularity that's very coarse, like cluster or uh, site or even machine, uh, there's usually a dimension that you can join all three systems together with. Um, and then if you look at the request scope, um, in that case, like logging and tracing, uh, you might be able to correlate with the trace ID and then transition between the two systems. And arbitrarily, I chose RPC name for a way to transition between tracing and metrics, although it's of course possible for you to correlate your logs by that too. So, I mean, if you take nothing else, I think one of the things I, I hoped to get is that there's different strengths uh, in each of these systems and, you know, understanding where their values are, like um, what, what they have to bring to the table and also where they might have some weaknesses are, are going to basically get you in the best position to observe your systems. Um, you know, some recaps, I mean, logs, uh, certainly valuable from the perspective of latency. You'll find that black boxes, things that you can't control. Uh, you may be actually finding yourself in position to parse those logs. Definitely when you get into exceptions, it's, it's handy to have those to help explain things that might not be caught in metrics or traces. And, you know, metrics, regardless, um, you know, this is where we find our patterns. That's why we alert in metrics. And, um, you know, in the case of metrics, it's interesting because um, because they're in aggregates, they're, they're not less sensitive. So if, if data is dropped or metrics don't necessarily change. Um, traces, um, their thing that they bring to the table is the answer to why is it slow? What's knock-on effect of this specific request? And so if you found this helpful, uh, I'd like to share the thanks with the folks that had helped me with uh, reviewing and adding to this content. And if you don't, um, blame me completely. They had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for your time. <laughs>